SpaceX engineers across the country flock to Starbase to reinforce their ambitious timelines. Starlink missions are scheduled to recommence from the West Coast, Falcon Heavy wins a big NASA contract, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Last week, Elon told us that SpaceX may attempt to perform a nine-engine static fire on Booster 3. However, a member of NASA's Space Flights Forum has shared that may no longer be the case, because sources close to SpaceX have indicated that Elon halted Booster 3 activity and instead ordered several hundred of his employees from Hawthorne, California and Cape Canaveral to relocate to Starbase, Texas in an effort to stack Booster 4 and Starship 20 on the orbital pad by August 5th. This intel was soon after confirmed by local photographers like Jack Sweeney, who snapped pictures of employees being chartered on SpaceX's private jets from Florida to Brownsville, and local news outlets reporting that hotels near Starbase are nearing capacity due to the influx of young, energetic rocket fuel sniffers. Prior to the exodus into South Texas, Texas. SpaceX twatted their achievement of building the 100th Raptor engine at their Hawthorne headquarters. Those Raptors are sent to McGregor, Texas for testing, then further down the road to Starbase. At least a dozen Raptors have arrived on site since the weekend. Our new contributor, Nick, was there to photograph multiple shipments, most lacking an engine bell, but that doesn't seem to be an issue for the Musk man. And again, guys, please be sure to check out the description below this video and support my contributors like Nick. Let's keep their valuable intel flowing. Nick also spotted new downcomers that were delivered to the construction yard. These giant pipes are used to flow methane from Starship and Super Heavy's upper fuel tank through the lower liquid oxygen tank to the engines. Booster 4 got hers inserted on Monday night in the high bay where she's currently being stacked. Last night, Elon shared a top-down image of the booster's feed system for its 29 Raptors. The beast is so big that you'd have a hard time believing there are almost two dozen people inside the belly squished between the pipes. Those are just the primary fuel lines. The maze of secondary plumbing and wiring is our greatest concern. However, Raptor version 2.0 is a major improvement in simplification, while also increasing thrust from about 185 tons to about 230. Long-term goal is engine costs below $1,000 per ton of thrust. The other half of the rocket, Starship 20, is stacking in the mid-bay. This week, engineers began awarding her body with stickers, aka heat shield tiles, as well as her nose cone that was moved out of a nearby tent so forward flaps could also be attached. And speaking of noses, Elon confirmed that crews have been performing a Pathfinder test for future cargo missions, cutting a payload bay door out of a test nose cone. The actual bay door dimensions are still under debate. Volume inside the cargo bay is about 1,000 cubic meters. Roomy. I called shotgun, everybody heard me. By the way, mass to orbit is what really matters, not how many rockets a company or government agency can launch. That's why they call it dick measuring and not penis tallying. For example, Starship will be able to lift the combined mass of all 11 Falcon flights of quarter two this year with one flight. To stack this two-stage rocket, SpaceX is also stacking a launch and integration tower two miles down Highway 4. The ninth segment of said tower was hauled over there this week and promptly lifted into place. Congrats SpaceX tower team and supporting contractors. This piece included a couple pulleys for stacking Starship atop its super heavy booster. Wednesday, we also saw the orbital launch table relocate from the construction yard down to the launch site. Look at all those hold down clamps, as well as the move of GSC Tank 5. Going back to the leaked report, SpaceX is seeking enough cryo capacity with the ground systems equipment by August 5th for the suborbital and orbital test of Booster 4 and Starship SN20 respectively. Elon also came out and twatted that SpaceX will soon be constructing a second, but much larger high bay just north of the current one. It will be a little taller, but with a much bigger base and two gantry cranes that will run full span. Meaning SpaceX, perhaps by the end of the year, will be able to fully stack three boosters or starships at once, which is necessary if Elon still wants to build a 1000 starship fleet for Mars. And Elon also wants to remind you that both Earth and Mars need people. So those of you who are watching this and are parents, Please stop being selfish with your time, money, and life, like me, and start making more babies so the population doesn't collapse. SpaceX is in no position to fulfill those numbers on their own, because apparently they're too busy getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Oh! Oh, yeah! oh, fuck, fuck it! Although, West Nile would be a cute name for a boy. Let's move on to some Starlink and Falcon Heavy news. After surviving the dry month of July, we finally have another Starlink launch on the books. Slated for August is the launch of Starlink 
Those numbers are kind of ambiguous. This will be the first of a series of West Coast launches to polar orbit. So 2-1 could mean the first launch of a new orbit, or it could mean the first batch of version 2 Starlink satellites that are expected to debut in 2022. Or perhaps these satellites are just version 1s outfitted with laser links. Elon is hopeful that these version 2 Starlink sats, when delivered by Starship, perhaps more than 400 at a time, can be directly injected into target orbits instead of taking months to use their onboard ion thrusters to arrive at their final parking orbits. Bloomberg reported this week that the Federal Communications Commission told SpaceX that $886 million they won last December as part of the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund could not be used to provide Starlink internet to already connected areas like parking lots and airports. A report from the Free Press found that $111 million of SpaceX's wins is going to places like thin highway medians or New York City parking lots. So are they trying to argue that county mowers and valets don't need fast internet? Screw you guys, I'm going home. Cartman, yeah, screw you guys, home. And finally, SpaceX announced they won NASA's $178 million contract to launch the Europa Clipper satellite mission aboard a Falcon Heavy vehicle in October 2024. This will be Earth's first mission to conduct detailed investigations of Jupiter's moon, Europa, and will use sophisticated science instruments to investigate whether the icy surface or the underlying lakes are suitable for life. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, Rocket Lab's 21st Electron mission, it's a little Chile up here, lifted off from New Zealand carrying an R&D satellite for the US Space Force. The company suffered a failure during their previous mission when a corrupt igniter caused the second stage engine to shut down mid-flight, but not this time, Jack. The mission was a success, placing the military's payload into orbit. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. My appreciation goes out to all my eccentric members and patrons supporting the channel. You can do the same by using the links in the description below or simply leave a dollar dollar tip using the new thanks icon next to the like button. It was the uh, famous rapper, Milton Freeman, who once said, don't be a commie, pay us that money. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>